Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for FPL Game Week 35 for the 5% series. The idea being if you only select players from what I'm going to show you now you should do alright and hopefully finish in the top 5% globally. We start by looking at the scores that the players managed for Game Week 34. So for the expensive keepers Pickford 18, Rare 16 they're both very good. For the cheaper keepers Henderson 5 and that's all. For the expensive defenders, if you had the Arsenal boys, well done, they did well. Two Liverpool defenders, not so good. For the cheaper defenders, Branthwaite 20, so well done if you had him. Mitchell 6, the rest nothing. For the expensive midfielders, Odegaard 20, Fernandes who only had one game, 18, Saka 9, Salah 3, Liverpool were woeful for their double game week. Now I'm recording this before the Brighton Man City game. So the Man City players in this system don't have any score yet. So who knows, maybe Foden gets a good score tonight. For the cheaper midfielders, Havertz 17, well done if you had him. The rest nothing. For the cheapest midfielders, Eze 14, Rice 11, Garnacho 5, the rest nothing. For the expensive forwards, Watkins 9, Solanke 8. For the cheaper forwards, Oiland 7, Munez 5, and that's all. And that's what happened for their scores. So if you've been following this system strictly, you'll still have your bench boost probably and you'll be looking to use that in game week 37. We're about to start game week 35. So the next three game weeks, you want to prob probably be collecting quite a few double game week players and we'll point those out as we go through this. But you absolutely don't have to get 15 double game week players. You just need 15 good players and hopefully quite a few double game week players. And you don't want any players that are going to be injured because of the bench boost. So we'll look at the players now and see what we think of them. Vicario's got a double this game week and a double in 37. So if you're needing a new goalkeeper, Vicario should be a good choice. But the two fixtures this week are both London derbies. They could both be quite feisty games. So there's a reasonable chance I think he won't get any clean sheets this game week. But... The last two game weeks of the season he might be okay and he might get clean sheets. So if I was getting a goalkeeper, I'd be fine to get Vicario. If your current goalkeeper is okay though, don't waste a transfer on a goalkeeper. Raya is fine to sell. Now if I had nothing else to do and my team was perfect, would I go from Raya to Vicario? I don't think I would. I think I'd probably keep Raya. But I've made him to... He's sellable now in case you've got lots of transfers and you want to switch him around. Ray is not going to get more than probably six or seven points this game week. Vicario could get 14 points. In game week 37, Ray is only going to get six or seven points. Vicario could get 14, 15 points. That's kind of where you're going with those. So uh, it depends. If, you're, if your rank is a lot lower than you want and you've got Raya, you may want to switch to Vicario. If your rank's around about where you want to be or maybe slightly lower and you have Raya... I think you should just keep him. Onana's a good keeper to get and he's got a double in game week 37. Home to Burnley this week, so a reasonable chance of a clean sheet there. Leno's all right, home to Palace this week. Pickford, if you watch me enough, you know that I like Pickford as a keeper. So he's at home to Brentford this week, then he's got Luton, then he's home to Sheffield United, then he's got Arsenal. If you've got Pickford, absolutely worth keeping him. Neto didn't get to play last game week. His remaining fixtures aren't great. If your other keeper's a good keeper, you don't need to waste a transfer on him. If your other keeper's dodgy or not very good at all, it will be worth taking a minus four to replace Neto for someone better. And you should be okay for money because there are enough cheap players in this system where you can free up money. Petrovic's got a double this game week, a double in two game weeks' time. He's all right. Now, Chelsea defensively aren't great. So there's a reasonable chance he won't get any clean sheets. But with a double game week, that could be a three and a three. He could well get six points and that's all right. Henderson's fine to sell. Dubravka, we still don't know when Pope's coming back. If he's not back this season, then Dubravka is very good. 4.3, home to Sheffield United this game week, Dublin 37. But if Pope is back sometime during 37, then there's no point having Dubravka. I'd say if you've got Dubravka, he's fine to keep. Um, would I buy him? I'd be right buying him if I had another keeper that was going to play at the end of the season. Or if you're really short of money, you could get Dubravka. But you should be able to get players 
where money's not an issue. And Ariola's not playing at the moment, it seems. You should sell him. If you've got Ariola and Neto, or if you've got two of Ariola and Neto Henderson, I think it's worth changing one of your keepers, even if it's for a hit. Regarding defenders, so all the Liverpool players now are sellable. They don't have a double. Their fixtures aren't great. And a lot of them are expensive, so you can free up some money. You absolutely don't have to sell any of them, but he is sellable if you want to get a better player. Trippier, I've marked him as sellable, even though Newcastle have great fixtures. It's currently looking at time of recording that he's not going to be playing this game week. He may be back for game week 37. If you don't have Trippier, don't buy him. If you do have Trippier, it's okay to sell him, but you don't have to. Robertson, if you want to free up some cash, he's fine to sell. White, so I've made most of the Arsenal players sellable. I've got three Arsenal players, and by game week 38, I will probably have three Arsenal players. I may sell one or two in the meantime, then buy them back. So of all the single game week players that are in the system, that is players that don't have any doubles left, Arsenal are the best ones, and it's absolutely fine to keep them. I personally wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't take a hit to remove any of the Arsenal players because they're fine, but if you want to, you can. So Saliba is also sellable if you want to. Porro, he's currently flagged, but if he is going to play this weekend, then he is worth getting. Would I change White for Porro? I wouldn't do it for a hit if I had nothing else to do and a free transfer. Possibly I would do. Um, but Porro's all right. And it's it's fine generally to take hits, by the way. After all that I've said, it's fine to take hits to make your squad stronger for the remaining four game weeks. I'm just saying I'm not sure it's worth taking a hit to remove someone like White. Shah, so Shah's going to be playing, or Cher. I thought about putting a picture of Cher up, the singer actually, but anyway. Uh, so if you want to buy a Newcastle defender, Cher's probably the good one, the best one to get. He's at home to Sheffield United this game week. Then he's got Burnley. Then he's got a double. Then he's away to Brentford. There could be a few clean sheets there. He's got some attacking potential. Gabriel, again, is sellable. There are going to be lots of managers globally that are wildcarding this game week, aiming to have 14 or 15 double game week players in game week 37. And with the bench boost, that's like having 30 players playing. With the captain, that's like having 32 players playing. So there's going to be some very big scores in game 37. So with that in mind, it is okay to be taking hits because you're going to get a lot of players out of it. It is not worth taking hits for rubbish double game week players. So I will warn you if any of the players in here are a bit dodgy. Shah, I think, is perfectly okay to get. Poro's dodgy if he's still flagged. Trippier's dodgy because he's flagged. For the cheaper defenders... Chilwell is flagged. If he wasn't flagged, he'd be good to get. So although he's got a double this game week in 37, don't buy Chilwell. If you've got him, you could risk that he's going to play. If I had him, I'd probably be tempted to sell him, but you don't have to. You can just put him on your bench and hope he's back for 37. Dallow. Oh, I should have made him yellow, sorry. Dallow's probably a good player. He's home to Burnley this week. He's only 5.2. He's got a double in 37. If you're looking to make a defender change, he's an all right one to get. Udogi looks like he's probably out for the season. So even though he's got doubles, if he's not playing, it doesn't even matter. So you want to sell him. Eight Nori, home to Luton this week, assuming he's fit. And then he's got Palace in 37. You absolutely don't need to get rid of him and he's fine to be keeping. But if you want to move a defender on to get in some better defenders, you can move him on. So don't buy Aiton Norrie now, but you don't have to sell him. Burn, cheapest Newcastle defender in this system. He's fine to have. He's got a double coming up. Home to Sheffield United this game week. Mitchell's fine to sell now. If you want to free up some space, you don't have to sell him though. Gusto's currently flagged. If he plays, he's definitely worth having. If he's flagged and doesn't play, of course, he's not worth having. I've got Gusto. I'm almost certainly not going to sell him. I'm just going to risk he's going to play. Branthwaite, you don't have to sell him. He's nice and cheap. Uh, he's all right, but I wouldn't bother buying him. Regarding the expensive midfielders, Salah is expensive. He doesn't have any doubles and he's not been great the last few game weeks. He was certainly very bad last night 
against Everton. So I've got Salah. I'm almost certainly going to sell him. If you've got him, absolutely worth selling. Even if it was for a hit because there are better midfielders to get. For example, Sun. He's got a double this game week at Dublin 37. Sun is almost certainly going to score four points more than Salah in this game week added to game week 37. So he's fine to do. You don't have to do that move, but it's a perfectly reasonable move. But there are cheaper midfielders than Sun that you may want to get that are also okay. Saka, I said that he's sellable, but if you want to keep him, that is absolutely fine. Next game week, he's got, as in game week 36, he's at home to Bournemouth. Game week 38, he's at home to Everton. So if it happens with your squad that you keep Saka, that's fine. But in the double, he's away to Man United, where someone like Sun is going to have two home fixtures, which is probably going to be better. Odegaard like Saki, you can tell him if you want to free up the space, but he's fine to keep. Fernandez is a good one to buy. So if you were selling Salah and you could choose any of these, and it was me, I would probably choose Fernandez first, then maybe Son, and then one of the other two. And then Foden is also a very good player, and he doubles in 37. So the three green ones are the best three to have on the page. I'm just wondering if I had the three orange, would I take a minus four to swap for the three greens? It would probably be worth it. Yeah. For the cheaper midfielders, Madison, he's here simply because he's still in the system. If you've got him, he's fine to keep, but don't buy him. Luis Diaz, 7.8 million. He's fine to move on just because Liverpool don't have any doubles and they weren't great the last game week. Havertz is fine to keep. I've got Havertz. I'm going to try really hard to hold on to him. But because of the way I'm shuffling my players around, I may have to move him on because there's lots of good midfielders. But Havertz is a good player. With Charleston, I've made him sellable because I think he's still flagged. We don't know he's going to be playing two games this coming game week. So if you've got Richarlison, he's fine to play, but you're risking you're only going to get a few minutes out of him. Palmer, even though he's flagged, he's worth having. Barnes, I don't know what his minutes are going to be, but he is a very good player. So I wouldn't be buying Barnes now, but if I had him, I almost certainly wouldn't be selling him either. Regarding the cheapest midfielders, Gordon, very good player. Home to Sheffield United this game week. He's got a double in game week 37. Home to Burnley in between. Then away to Brentford. He's worth getting and keeping if he doesn't get injured. If you could have Salah or Gordon and they're the same price, I'd say get Gordon. So, get Gordon. <laughs> and assuming Palmer's going to play, you really kind of want to have Gordon and Palmer in your teams now. Eze is a good player, but he's got one fewer fixtures than Gordon and the fixtures aren't as good. So if you've got Eze and not Gordon, that's an easy swap. Introducing Johnson now because he's got a double this coming game week and a double in 37 and he's getting the minutes, and he's quite attacking. If getting Sun means you're a bit tight somewhere else, it's absolutely fine to get Johnson. And I'm even considering for myself, would I rather have Johnson than Sun? So Sun is going to be much more higher owned. So if you went for Johnson and Sun did well, it's going to cost you a lot of rank. But if you went for Sun and Johnson did well, it's not going to cost you as much. So Sun is the safer one. Johnson's a lot cheaper though. So Sun is probably slightly better, but Johnson really isn't too much of a bad option. Rice is sellable, but he is nice and cheap. And he's fine to keep. Garnaccio is also nice and cheap, but he's at home to Burnley this week. And then he's got a double in game week 37. So Garnaccio is a good buy. For the forwards, Haaland, I've not made him green, but if you've got him, that's great. If you can get him in, that's great. He doubles in 37. But I'm recording this while Brighton are playing Man City. And I believe he's not going to be playing in that. I should have checked. But I think he's not playing in that. So we don't know he's back yet. So personally, I'm certainly not going to be taking hits to bring in Haaland. Because we don't know what his fitness level actually is. I'd like to see him back and playing and then bring him in. If you've got him, he's absolutely worth keeping though. Watkins is fine to keep. But if you want to sell him because you want to get in a double game week player... That's fine. But he's at home to Chelsea this game week. Chelsea defensively have been very poor recently. So he's a reason, got a reasonable chance of getting some points. Isaac's worth getting. Home to Sheffield United in a Dublin 37. 
Darwin, absolutely worth selling. I didn't make him red, but he's not been great and he's got fewer fixtures than a lot of the other players. So Darwin to Isaac would be a good move. Solanke's a perfectly good player, home to Brighton. Two weeks' time, he's home to Brentford, but he's not got any doubles left. So he'd be better off swapping Solanke for someone who has got a double. For the cheaper forwards, Hoyland's, I think he's going to be a good player to have. Home to Burnley, he's got a double in 37. And I'm personally considering selling Watkins to get in Hoyland. I've not decided for sure, but I may do that. Jackson's good. He didn't get his 10th yellow card, which means he shouldn't. he's not going to get banned for having lots of yellow cards now. He's got a double this game week and a double in game week 37. He is technically quite a good player. He is very fast. He has a reasonable chance of getting a few goals or assists between now and the end of the season. So Werner's a new entry. Most content creators are either not talking about him or rubbishing him. I actually think he could be worth a punt. So... North London derby against Arsenal, but I think he'll be up for that. Then he's playing Chelsea, and when you go to an old stomping ground, loads of strikers do really well on their own old ground. Now, I'm aware if Richardson comes back, maybe he won't get the minutes in game week 37, but I still think he may do that. So, if you're thinking about getting Werner, I think that's a perfectly fine move. For myself, if I could have Jackson or Werner... I think currently I'd go Werner. But I know probably all content creators would disagree with me on that one. Kuna, he's nice and cheap. Don't bother buying him now. And he didn't play last game week with double because he was injured. But he is cheap and it may be that frees things up. You'll want to change him by game week 37 though. If you can, yeah. Change him by game week 37. So if you could do Kuna to Hoyland, for example, that'd be worth doing. Munez is fine. He's nice and cheap. But you may well want to move him on by game week 37 because he's at home to Man City. Reasonable chance of not getting anything for that. So we now look at suggested benching order and we look at the captaincy choices. This is just my suggestion. If you blindly follow these, this advice, you'll probably do okay. If you want to do something different, that is absolutely fine. This is just my suggestion. The first keeper you see that you've got, I'm suggesting, is the one you put on your bench. So if you've got Ariola, probably not even playing, he's on your bench. Henderson, way to Fulham. Don't think that would be a clean sheet. Neto, if he plays at home to Brighton, not a clean sheet. Leno at home to Palace, possibly a clean sheet. Everton at home to Brentford could be a clean sheet. Dubravka home to Sheffield United, more chance of a clean sheet. Ray away to Tottenham, North London derby, anything could happen. There's a reasonable chance of a clean sheet there. Anana home to Burnley, reasonable chance of a clean sheet. Petrovic's got a double. Not expecting you those to be a clean sheet, but he could still get six points. And then Vicario, slightly more chance of a clean sheet, I think. And he's all right. So that's my suggested order for the keepers. Regarding the other players, the first player you see that you've got, I suggest goes position three in your bench, the next one position two, and the last one position one. So Mitchell, Eze, Darwin, Luis Diaz, Barnes, Rice, Branthwaite, Aitnori, Virgil van Dijk, Robertson, Chilwell, Byrne, Dallo, Garnacho, Hoyland, Odegaard, Kuna, Munez, Saliba, Gabriel, White, Shah, Trippier, Solanke, Madison, Saka, Richarlison, Havertz, Gusto, Porro, Salah, Foden, Johnson, Fernandez, Haaland, and Watkins. And there's six players I haven't shown you here, and that's because they're the captaincy choices for this game week. So for captaincy, I think Palmer, if he's fit and not flagged, is probably a good choice and he's worth captaining. But if he's flagged and there's some doubt about his minutes, you may want to go elsewhere. For example, I think Sun is a reasonable choice. You could also go for Werner. Just don't tell any other content creators that I'm suggesting him. But he could do all right and he'd be a nice punt. Jackson, again, is a nice little gamble. Isaac, even though he's only got a single game week, it is at home to Sheffield United. There could be loads of goals there. And it's the same for Gordon. So I think any of these are fine for your captain. Any are fine for your vice captain. But I wouldn't go for Isaac and Gordon as your captain and vice captain because they've only got one game week. If you don't want to go for any of these, or you can't go for any of these, then I'd suggest the previous page, 
the player nearest the beginning is the one that's worth captaining. As for the background picture, that's Robinson Crusoe. You may have heard of him. He was That was first published in 1719 on April the 25th, and today is April the 25th. I think some managers looking online are feeling a bit washed up with their teams just now because they didn't have great scores. Other people did have a good score. But anyway, Robinson Crusoe, Daniel Defoe was the author. There he is on his desert island with his football. And that's all he had. There we had it. That's suggestions for game week 35 and onwards. Given the double game weeks we've got coming up, I think it's entirely reasonable to be taking quite a few hits now. Minus 4, minus 8 or even a minus 12. If it's going to make your team stronger, ideally, if you've still got your bench boost, you want to have 15 good players. You don't have any freeloaders. It doesn't have to be 15 doublers, but you want 15 good players. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, I hope you have a good game week and I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>